Hi, so in week nine, we're just going to look at one lecture. We're not going to break this down into short screencasts because I think we can cover this in a fairly short single screencast. Um, so what we're going to look at is um, SWOT analysis and TOES analysis. The SWOT analysis builds on the work you've been doing in the first eight weeks of the module. And the TOES analysis itself is a simple enough concept to explain. And what we will do in the seminar this week, in week nine, and in coming weeks as well, is we will look at um, your attempts at TOES analysis and we can discuss that. And obviously discussing TOES analysis, um, if you've read the workbook, um, you will understand. If, if you've read the workbook before watching this screencast, you'll understand <clears throat> that TOES analysis builds from SWOT and that SWOT itself builds from external and internal analysis. So in discussing SWOT and TOES, we can also discuss internal analysis um, that you began in weeks seven and eight. So we can continue that discussion over the next two weeks or so. Okay, so um, the objectives for today or the aims for the session today um, are fairly clear. And um, again, we've talked about this in the workbook, or I've written about this in the workbook as the introduction to this. So I will go through these fairly quickly. Um, so in the workbook, we've tried to um, outline the place of SWOT analysis within the strategic management process. So it's that linchpin, that pivot point um, between strategic position, where are we now? But we're also going to look at it as a tool for using um, an approach to generating strategic options, strategic choices. Um, so it kind of fits halfway between the kind of where are we now and how we're going to get where we want to be questions. Um, I'm not going to talk to you about carrying out effective SWOT analysis. Um, and then I'm going to introduce the concept of TOES analysis and explain very briefly um, how TOES analysis and SWOT can be used to generate strategic choices. But really, um, the understanding of this, I think, will come through the application and when you start to apply some of the principles of TOES analysis to your assignment organisation. So the first thing I want to talk about is effective SWOT analysis. So there are some golden rules for SWOT, which it's just worth mentioning. And the first thing is that really you, you've kind of sweated and worked hard of external analysis and internal analysis over the last eight weeks of the module. Um, and to get to you to the point where you're ready to complete SWOT. So really anything that comes in your SWOT matrix shouldn't just appear. It should have been flagged up in a discussion and an analysis. So an in-depth discussion and an in-depth analysis which is based on data and an assessment of which factors are most important and which factors are less important but it should have been flagged up in a discussion or analysis of the opportunities and threats the o's and t's in the macro environment <clears throat> so from within a pestle analysis framework and the opportunities and threats in the industry or the business environment or the micro environment using, for example, Porter's Five Forces Framework. Okay, so the strengths and weaknesses we're saying then come from the external environment. So they're outside the organization, the opportunities and threats. Yeah, the strengths and weaknesses are derived from internal resources and capabilities or a lack of internal resources and capabilities. And as we've talked about over the last couple of weeks, you can generate this um, by looking at functional analysis for national governing bodies or commercial organisations, value chain analysis assessment tools, and we've talked how you can tailor those, um, those resources, those templates that I've made available to you in the week seven folder so that they become more applicable to the way your organisation creates its products or services, the activities that it's engaged in, the key functions that it's engaged in. Okay, so, but the SWOT golden rule is that things just shouldn't appear. They should have been flagged up and evidenced um, and the opportunities and threats come from the external environment and the strengths and weaknesses 
come from the internal environment. So, <clears throat> as I said in the lecture, um, and I'm not going to talk about how you write a SWOT, um, we're going to focus on the strategic options arising from SWOT. And obviously in the workbook there are links to um, a template which has got suggested and um, inclusions for a SWOT analysis or possible things to consider um, within a SWOT analysis. And there's also a link to the Hill and Jones book, um, which is on the module reading list. But there's also a hyperlink direct to the um, reference in the library gateway so that you can actually find um, the book that I'm talking about. And that too has got a useful checklist of options for a SWOT analysis. But what I want to talk about here is that um, there are some strategic options which begin to arise as we start to think about SWOT because SWOT sometimes and too often in student work and in other kind of management reports is seen, an, seen as an end in itself. But as we understand within strategic management, and as I've said, it's a pivot point um, or a kind of hinge where we kind of move away from analysing what's going on outside and inside the organisation to begin to think, well, what can we do about this situation that we're in then? And how can this inform strategic options for the organisation moving forward? So here we've got a very simple cell. So we've got the internal and the external environment and some factors in the internal or external environments will be positive or helpful. You could think of these as tailwinds, if you like. So things that are going to make your job easier um, or more likely that the organisation is going to succeed. And some things are negative or harmful. Or if you like, the headwinds, they're going to make the going tougher. They're going to make achieving what you want to achieve as an organisation more difficult. And obviously then, the, the, the things that are positive or helpful that are derived from the internal environment are strengths or capabilities or competencies. And really, strategic options based on strengths are <clears throat> how do we maintain these and exploit them? And how do we build and get better at this? Because the competitive landscape might not stand still. So you can't kind of rest on your laurels. You've got to think, OK, well, how could we become more efficient? How could we improve our quality? How could we innovate better? How could we do better in terms of customer responsiveness? Those four building blocks of competitive advantage that Hill and Jones talk about in their strategic management textbook. So strengths and capabilities, really, how can we exploit them and how can we maintain and build those? Those are the kind of strategic thoughts that you need to have. <clears throat> the other factor that comes from in the internal environment, which is negative and harmful, are weaknesses or deficiencies in resources and competencies. And really, you would kind of reduce or ideally eradicate some of these weaknesses. And again, you, you might not develop superior efficiency, but you might take steps towards improving efficiency so that your performance becomes acceptable. Yeah, so you meet a threshold. Um, or maybe, you know, there's a gap between where you think you need to be and where you currently are, and you want to achieve superior performance against some of these weaknesses. So maybe it's not just improve efficiency, maybe it's kind of, you know, develop superior efficiency. But anyway, what you can see in this box here is that we are talking about improving um, against the four building blocks of competitive advantage. OK, so and then in the external environment, we've got things which are harmful or negative, which are threats. So obviously you need to kind of combat or you could actually say avoid threats. So you can meet threats head on or you can just seek to avoid them if possible. It's not always possible to avoid threats. It's maybe not always wise to avoid threats as well. Um, and opportunities. You have to prioritise. So as you've done in task one for your assignment, you haven't written about a long list of um, unprioritised factors. You've prioritised and you've selected two to discuss in some detail. So opportunities, you need to prioritise them. 
um, because not all opportunities are equal in terms of the, the opportunity they represent to your particular organisation because of what you're trying to do, because the of what your business is. Um, and also you've got to try to optimise the opportunities, right? So you, you're trying to pursue and exploit the opportunities um, that are available to you in the external environment. So opportunities where we prioritise and then we think, okay, how do we optimise these opportunities and turn them into, you know, real advantageous situations for our organisation? So, um, so that's kind of issues kind of in the general environment. And therefore, really what we're talking about um, in terms of SWOT analysis is if we think about SWOT as being based around strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, then we have, you know, if we're thinking about <clears throat> strengths and opportunities, the overall <clears throat> goal is to exploit your strengths and exploit opportunities to the advantage of the organisation and the business, whatever its goals are, whatever its objectives are, right? Weaknesses and opportunities, you need to explore and to see what you can do to improve in order to be able to exploit the opportunities. So you're kind of prevaricating a bit more here. You're kind of trying to decide what to do, um, but you, you, you're trying to put in place some kind of internal processes that allow you to kind of improve um, in order to be able to pursue the opportunities here. Um, and then you've got strengths and threats here. So the idea is you, use your, you can use your strengths to confront threats and weaknesses and threats. Ideally, you would try to avoid these, but if you can't avoid them, then you're going to have to improve your kind of weaknesses. You're going to have to improve in areas of weakness so you are better placed to confront them if you need to confront them. And this really takes us on to starting to think about Toe's analysis. So... There is a TOES analysis in the workbook on the uh, module Blackboard site. Um, but I'll just talk you through this and then you can look at the template and see how it's set up. So what you have here is, in effect, you have eight cells which are in play. So the eight cells which are in play are the strength cell, the weaknesses cell, the opportunities and the threats cells. What you would usually do in these is you would have a strengths title and then you would list and number the strengths from your SWOT or you could just write this straight up. You know, you can kind of bypass SWOT and just list the strengths for your organisation in this cell here. So you have a list of strengths numbered ideally, yeah? Not just a bullet list, but numbered. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute. And you do the same with weaknesses. You number your weaknesses here in a bullet list. And a numbered bullet list of opportunities and a numbered bullet list of threats. Okay. So we've completed four of the eight cells, which I said are in play. This is just a kind of title cell. So four of our cells we've populated with strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now what we need to do is kind of start to think about what goes into these cells. So I've talked to you about how TOES analysis, previously I've mentioned briefly how TOES analysis looks to exploit the synergies and the links that exist between different SWOT categories or quadrants or different categories within the SWOT matrix. So here we have SO strategies. And SO strategies says, let's look at the list of the strengths that we've bullet listed down here and see which of these match up well with opportunities here. And therefore, how can we use strengths to maximize opportunities and generate strategic options around these? Yeah. So if you look at the examples on Blackboard that students have worked at in the past, if you look at the example I've done from a consultancy project um, that I've provided and that's linked via a button on the, um, <clears throat> in the workbook this week, you'll see approaches to doing this. Okay. 
Then we have ST strategies. How can we use strength to <clears throat> avoid threats or to minimize threats? Then we have WO strategies. How can we offset weaknesses or overcome weaknesses to take advantage of opportunities? And finally, we've got WT strategies. How can we minimize weaknesses to avoid threats? Okay, now, if you look at the example that is linked through the button on the worksheet this week, you'll see that what I've done is when I numbered the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, I would then talk about a strategic option, yeah, which is built on strengths, which might be strengths number three and four and opportunity one. So what you're doing is you're referencing and saying, okay, here you can see the rationale for my strategy because it's based on these strengths and these opportunities and I'm matching these factors up here to generate this strategic option. So the strategic option is very much based on evidence that you've generated through your extensive trawl of the external and the internal environment which has generated the deep and rich insights which you have um, been able to create. Okay, so so that's in a nutshell what TOES analysis is and how it works. Obviously, in seminars, you're going to have the opportunity to work on this a little bit more. So let's just say something more about SO strategies. I want to talk about each cell, each of the internal four cells, which are about the strategies. I want to talk about these um, just in a little bit more detail. So SO strategies can be characterized as strategies that enable <clears throat> competitive advantage. So you already have um, competitive advantage in terms of having good strengths or good resources, good competencies, and you match these successfully to external opportunities, right? And the more SO kind of options you've got, the more likely you are to be able to kind of and build and maintain competitive advantage okay so and for many of you so strategies depending on the strategic position of the organization so a lot of you will have chosen big and probably successful organizations to concentrate on for your assignments um, so it's quite likely that so strategies may be the dominant strategies in terms of the number that you are able to generate through toes analysis because you've just got much more strengths and opportunities identified um, in your SWOT analysis than you have weaknesses and threats. So that's SO strategies. ST strategies, these are mitigation strategies and they are kind of, you know, what can we put in place to kind of mitigate a potentially bad situation, right? And the firm has internal strengths, resources, processes that allow neutralization of external threats. Now, just thinking about, you know, strategy and performance, and we said one of the goals of strategic management is to examine and understand why some organizations fail and others succeed. Now, ST strategies, if you are able to get the right ST strategies in place, this might lead to, if, you, if you're working in a competitive kind of, you know, profit orientated business, then this may lead to temporary advantage if the competitors are impacted by the same environmental threats, but they don't have the same strengths or, they're not, or they don't think about deploying their strengths in the same way as you to minimize the threats. So you might gain a step competitively on um, other actors in your industry if you're able to identify some good and innovative ST strategies. And this innovation point is, is kind of important. I say in the workbook that, you know, when whereas when you were looking at external and internal analysis, you were, you were doing it within fairly tightly defined frameworks and you were using evidence and data. So you were collecting evidence and data. So that's very much about information collection, researching and information processing skills. 
right? When we come to strategy, we're a bit more into a different way of thinking. So you're putting a different thinking hat on, if you like, or you're seeing the world differently. You're using a different part of your brain, if you like. So whereas you may have been using highly analytical skills for external and internal analysis, you've got to employ to some extent here some creative solution finding thinking, which is rooted in some reality through your external and internal analysis, but it still looks for some creative solutions to actually dealing with this. And ST strategies might require that you deploy your resources in an imaginative, creative way in order to mitigate threats. WO strategies, really these are development and acquisition strategies. Yeah? So um, how can we, have we got the right resources um, to actually, or how can we acquire or develop resources in order to be able to pursue these opportunities? Now, can we do this ourselves or do we need to partner up with an alliance or work with somebody else in order to develop these um, strengths, to turn these weaknesses to strengths so in order to allow us to pursue these opportunities? But WO strategies can quite often be aligned to development or acquisition strategies. So how do we develop or acquire skills to pursue opportunities? And do we develop them internally ourselves or do we acquire them through working with or through another organisation? Um, and finally, WT strategies. So these could be consolidation or exit strategies. So there are two broad options here. Development or acquisition strategies are similar to what we looked like in WO strategies, where strategies are formulated to develop or acquire new resources or capabilities to minimize risks from external threats. So that's one potential strategic route and option, which WT strategies suggest. Or the other is exit or divestment strategy. If an organization can't find ways to convert weaknesses to strengths via acquisition or development, then exit from the option, exit from the market is an option that you should be considering potentially. Okay, now what we started to do here is start to talk about some of the directions of movement, um, directions of development for organizations that are part of corporate strategy. So we'll come back and talk about exit or divestment, development and acquisition, um, and some of those kind of concepts in next week's lecture. Um, but this really is the end of the screencast for TOES analysis. As I said, it's a fairly simple concept to understand. Um, the test really will come in how you are able to kind of build on what you know about the um, internal and external environment for your organization to be able then to build on those to generate some relevant and suitable um, strategic options. Further reading on this, um, well, there is a useful, I, I'm not sure that this is available electronically, I've got to be honest, I haven't checked. Um, so while we're locked down, I've got a feeling it is available electronically. Um, but maybe you could check. If not, it is available um, on the shelves at Collegiate Library. Um, but chapter two in this book has got a fairly good and detailed discussion of carrying out SWOT analysis um, in sport management. Um, and it uses the case of Nike to actually look at, um, at the SWOT analysis. So, um, a word of warning, though, it was written in 2011, so it's probably, it was developed in 2009, 2010 before publishing. So some of the information that's in the SWOT about Nike now is out of date. So if you're looking at Nike, um, I would resist the temptation to use too much of the information that's actually contained in the SWOT analysis um, that's talked through here. Um, but it, it, it does help illustrate how SWOT can also can be carried out. Um, and as well, although it's not called TOES analysis in, in this chapter, it does look at matching strategies. So how you match up different aspects or different quadrants of the SWOT matrix 
in order to develop some strategic options. OK, so that's the end of um, this week's lecture. Um, it has been shorter and in a way that's because, you know, the previous two weeks have been well over an hour and a half. So we're kind of clawing back a bit of time for you here. Next week's screencast um, probably will be slightly longer again compared to this week. So we're just taking our breath here, reflecting on what, we, what we've done so far, thinking about how we can use that to develop some strategic options and strategic choices. Next week in corporate strategy, um, we'll take a further look at other approaches and ways of conceptualising um, how organisations can think about strategic options. Okay, thanks very much.